Morning, everyone. A beautiful time for spending, becoming close with God. And as we progress, as we take up the journey, you will see like, you know, like a mother, young mother with a young baby, one, two, three, six month old baby. You know, the mother's consciousness, mother's mind is, by the way, mind is not consciousness, right? We are all fully aware of it. Mother's mind, mother's consciousness is always on the baby. What the baby doing? And <clears throat> this is what will start to happen as you proceed with this journey. Beautiful Advaita with Bhakti. So you have all the four methods, the Karma Yoga, working selflessly, Seva Hi Dharma, helping people, the mankind, like one of the staunch things was Dada Vaswani, Mother Teresa, and there are so many. Swami Vivekananda was the Karma Yogi, the guru of Karma Yoga, spread in the world over. Then you have Bhakti Yoga. And you have Raja Yoga, through the meditation, through the Patanjali, through the Kriya Yoga practices. And then you have Jnana Yoga. Generally, there is a debate among the most people that who are the follower of the Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga is the methodology of the Kali Yoga. And Jnana is too difficult to follow, which you and I have been following now for all four yogas, none to be missed out, everything to be done. And with that process, you will find that the whole day, like the young mother thinking about the baby, your mind will always be focused on to Supreme Divinity, Babaji, Divine Mother, Krishna, Shiva, our Gurudevas, Paramahansa, Yogananda, Teshwar Giri, Lahiri Masai, Swami, Sri Vivekananda, Holy Mother, and Paramahansa, Ramakrishna. Your mind will always dwell and you will see the divinity in each one of them. Let us start with our prayers, holy session, holy time, festivity, all of our celebration. Just now we finished the Durga Mata, now the Kali Mata and the Diwali. Lakshmi Mata is on fourth. And it's a beautiful celebration time. And then come the Jagadhatri and Saraswati. And <laughs> Let's pray to the Divine Mother. Om. Join me silently or loudly as per your convenience. Asato ma sat gamaya. Tamaso ma jyotir gamaya. Mrityar ma amritam gamaya. Om shanti, shanti, shanti. Guru, spread the word of peace and happiness and joy. You have noticed by now, having traveled so far, and each one of you are Kriya Yogi, maybe a few are not, that the, the paradigm of your thinking process is changed so much, so much. And our 
practices, it becomes like, you know, that mother whose heart and love and the awareness is all the time on the baby, young mother with the young baby. But even that young mother, when she falls off to sleep, to deep sleep, her hand which was patting on the baby, holding on to the baby, her hand falls away. And she is not sad about it. She does it happily because all the time she's exhausted, no? <laughs> Many of your mothers are there, will say, yes, mothers never get any sleep. All the time, mind is with the baby. But that mother also, when she truly falls off to sleep, her hand falls away. Happily detach. Asanga aham, asanga aham, asanga aham. This is the Vedantic meditation starting off. I am detached and detached. Truly, we are detached. Like, if you look carefully, The waves, the ocean are, we say, made of water. But now we know it is not made of water. It is the water itself presents, represents, presents itself as the wave. The water itself, it is not, it has water in it. That means that the water is separate, wave is separate. If I take away the water, Remember that glass with the water example. If I take away the water, water and glass are two separate objects. I can't do that with the water, with the ocean, water with the waves, water with the river. It is the water itself. And when the mother, young mother's hand falls away, she has gone into the deep sleep. Remember Mandakya Upanishad, Seven Sutra, Jagrat. Sapna Susupti. This is the Susupti state. But recollecting the Turiya state, the fourth. The fourth is actually not the fourth. It is the one and one alone. Is that one Turiya where through the deep sleep mother travels? Turiya is the seed which has like the seed of a plant. It has a complete programming of knowing when to grow roots, when to grow leaves, when to grow flower, when to grow fruits, when to grow taller and taller. The Turiya has the entire programming of the deep sleep, of the Sopna, of the Chakrat. And Turiya seed comes in as a deep sleep where the mother has retired. And from there, those enlightened ones, many of you are on very well on your journey. You travel to that Turiya. And then same deep sleep becomes this dream sleep. Understanding dream sleep. In the dream state, your body, your mind is lying on the bed. Mind is with that body. In the dream body, there is another body. There is another mind. And you see ocean, the building, the river, the trees, the dinosaur, the tiger. Whatever you see, the men, the women, they are not men made of flesh and blood. They are made with your mind. The dinosaur is made with your mind. It is the mind which is forming the ocean in the dream state. It is the mind in the dream state makes the baby, makes the girl, makes the man, makes the palace, makes the mountain, whatever you're doing. And when you wake up as an Advaita Vedantist, you know that your travel in Sapna, dream state, was nothing else but the mind. What was in the submerged subconscious state or you have been thinking of or worried about or discussing comes up in the mind. And depending on the state, comes up as a good image 
or a worrisome state. It is the mind alone has created everything around and the jagrat. So it is the reflective consciousness of the consciousness is now throwing onto these lights to present yours and my world. And let us start sharing with, we have some very interesting questions. And the Vedanta, one of the very simple question and yet very powerful has come to me, why does bhakti supposed to be dualistic rather than non-dualistic? You know, our, the, the doubt, the quarrel amongst the Dvaita and Advaita is this, you know, Ramanujam, Madhubacharya, <laughs> and on the other side is Shankaracharya and Vidyarana. This is what was the, also the conversation of Swami Vivekananda mentioned in Long Island, 1895, 2nd of July, which was a Tuesday. Not bad, remembering. <laughs> he gave a talk on Divine Mother as Shakti. And there, he went ahead and quoted, you all think that I am an Advaita Vedantist in the heart of heart. When he was talking about Mother Kali, he said, I realize today that it is the Mother Kali alone who is speaking through me. And this is the understanding that you and I have today, that we all are Amazon.com delivery boy. We're just carrying and sharing the message with the divine Shakti, Mother, Brahman, God is sending it to us. So on one hand, we are non-dualistic, Advaita Vadi, Brahman, Aham Brahmasvi, I am the Brahman alone. And Shweta Ketu is being told by Father, Shweta Ketu Tat Tomasi, 13 times, he pointed out with various examples, Remember the famous clay pot, the lump of clay with a good craftsman has been formed into a clay pot, a lovely clay pot. The question comes in, Shankaracharya is asking, where is the clay? You say, clay is in this pot. He asks, where? You say in the outside, in the inside, in the bottom. In the top, Shankaracharya is saying, then I would say you are not holding clay pot. You are holding clay. Because all I am holding is what? The clay and clay alone. Everywhere there is clay. Inside, outside, everywhere. And if I have not baked it, I can shape that clay back into a plate or a shield or whatever I like. Maybe a bowl. So where is the clay? Everywhere. Where is the consciousness in you and me? Everywhere. In this table, in that tree, the plant, the animals, the devoted, enlightened one, and those who are the enemy like Bin Laden or Ibrahim Bin Daud. And this is why the Greek masters like Jesus and Buddha are all looking at everyone as one equal. And this is where the bhakti comes in. Why does this question come in? And Vivekananda goes on to say, I am actually a bhakti yogi in that Long Island talk. And he was a great Vedantist, as you know, he is the one who made Vedanta available. His mission, he says, my mission is only can be expressed in two sentences. First, realize the supreme divinity from within. And in another place, 
similar line, slightly different word. He says schooling, learning in the school is not for earning money. You and I were told, no, if you don't study well, don't do well, who will give you a job? You will not get a job. Who's going to feed you? In other words, learning was for earning money. But he says schooling, education, is manifestation of that divinity from within into reality. And the second step he says, manifest that one is, realize the manifestation of the divinity from within. And second part he says, and manifest it in every walk of life. Whatever you're doing, manifest it. This is what I was just sharing as you're proceeding now. Whatever you do, you touch, you eat, you wear, you know, it is the supreme divinity, Brahman, divinity, divine, Krishna, Shiva, dualism or non-dualism. Why did the question come? Why did the question come? Why bhakti seems to be dual? It is so by convention. Why? Question is very nice and very thoughtfully, powerfully done and a very daring question too. <laughs> you see, the moment we say, I am in love, the moment you say, I am in love, you will immediately say, who is the lucky girl or who is the lucky boy? Depending on I am a man or I am a woman. Immediately you will relate it with a man or a woman. You will see immediately that there has to be another. It may be uh, I'm in love with a concept. I'm in love with an object. I'm in love with a living being. I'm in love with a similar partner, the human race. I'm in love with, you know, there has to be another. It could be I'm in love with God, but it, there is another dualistic. Dualism comes in. But the beauty is here, Vivekananda goes ahead that my guru, who you say is a bhakti yogi, like, you know, Ramakrishna Paramahansa spent all his life in worshipping Mother Kali and Divine Mother. His own wife, he worshipped her Holy Mother Sharada, who he said is the reincarnation of the Divine Mother onto the earthly form as the mother as Mother Saraswati, Sharada, in the name of Saraswati. Mm -hmm. And he worshipped her all throughout her life. Actually, Vivekananda goes on to say, he is a true Vedantist. And yet, it appears to be his dualistic. Now, how does the confusion come and how do we resolve this? It appears to be dual. And we are doing Advaita. The moment I say, I'm in love, meaning two, dualistic, two. So it starts with two. Please be with me. Very beautiful, very simple. It starts with two. But have you realized lovers do not like separation? Lovers don't like distance. They like to be together and as close to as possible. Body to body, mind to mind, holding hand, being together all the time. The mother who gives birth to a baby, her closest, the best love in the world. Mother doesn't like the baby to be away all the time, holding on to the baby. Have you realized even in the animal world, look at the way the cat keeps the kitten. And kitten is so helpless, kitten will not move wherever the cat mother puts the kitten. It will stay there and do meow, meow. So do the eaglings. Eagles, baby eagle, will not move. Till the time the eagle mother knows, now my baby is ready to fly. And you know what the eagle mother does? Please read it. Fantastic. The eagle mother, generally their nest is high up in the ledge in a crevice where nobody can reach. And there's some beautiful pictures in the Google. I've been doing some research on the eagle. She pushes the eagling off the ledge. And the eagle baby is shrieking and falling and falling and falling and falling. And suddenly the eagle eagling spreads its wing and starts to flap. 
and starts to fly and soars back to mother and joins the mother. Same way, the cat's baby, the bear's baby, the crocodile baby, they carry it in their mouth all the time. That continuous touch is, is there with the keeping. Then look at the monkey. They carry the baby always on their hand and running in three legs. No? <laughs> you must have seen them. This is called the dualistic. And yet it tends to become one, urging to be one. Love does not like separation. Love wants closeness, oneness together. Can this non-dualistic and is it required? Yes, it is required. Why is it? Because the separation of the dualism, it brings, it talks about bhakti artyam kalpitam advaitam. Shankaracharya is going on to say, bhakti artyam, its actual means, kalpityam advaitam. It is imaginary separation. It is not actually separation. The bhakti wants to merge with God, merge with one. The dualistic in the human form, you're the my daily form. Notice the, the mother baby, the couple wants to be together and no want separation. Why? Because the moment there is separation, separation means two. And why does it come? Nama Rupa Babuhara. Name, form, and action. So what does bring the separation? The name, my body, I'm a man, I'm a woman, and my work. Name, form, body, and action, my work. It separates the two. And this is why there is woman's right and <laughs> husband's right. It Quarrel goes on. Why? Because we operate from being separate. Wise people, wise husband, wise wives, they always find oneness and search for that oneness. Why should we do that? Because separation brings suffering. Separation brings delusion. Separation brings error. Separation brings conflict of ideologies. Separation separates. But the non-dualism, that is oneness, which actually the journey of the bhakti, if you look at it, you want to be, you're telling the mother, mother, take me on your lap. Father, hold my hand. in which you're wanting to become one. Make me realize who you really are. Make me become one with you. This is the journey. This is what happens in the water and the wave, in the clay and the pot, in the gold and the ornaments, in the table and the wood, everywhere. So that separation is not good. And this is what we in the Advaita Vedanta meditation, you notice we keep on saying that oneness, oneness alone. So how can it be one? I have a different body. I'm a man. I'm a woman. I have a different name. I work differently. My job is different. Because we are operating from the level of the mind and the level of the body. And our journey through the Advaita is to go to that which is consciousness. Recollect our last sessions where we talk about Rupert Spider, in which the consciousness was being discussed. So people generally say, my consciousness guided me. I was conscious. It is Rupert Spider saying, no, that's a wrong statement. The moment you say my consciousness, 
is as if it becomes consciousness is another like a part of my body or the mind or something like that like my intellect my ego my memory they have separate separate function like that my consciousness the rupert spider western author is <laughs> saying now it is not my consciousness it is the consciousness which has become this body through the existence consciousness existence sat chit is ananda remember ananda is purnatyam infinite ananda is not just joy that is only physical sense joy and love and happiness and you know fun But the true Ananda in the Advaita Vedanta in the Taittiriya Upanishad is talking about is the Ananda is the Purnatyam, Purnam. One alone is the complete. The moment it is complete, it is infinite. It is not a little ball. It is infinite. It is complete. And then only the Sat, the existence, existence is like the ocean. has made me this body this stable this house the people around the universe and the consciousness is which has become me is making me realize through the five senses and the mind and the body this world and that's how when you and i become unconscious and go to coma the world vanishes for us there is no world the enlightened one before that there is discrimination in the ocean let's say there is tsunami wave there is a big wave there is a giant wave there is a medium wave and a small wave when i realize as an enlightened person that i am not the wave not the bubble not the froth not the ocean not the river i am water have you ever reflected upon it just going off the tack for a second that the ganga aarti you have seen everyone almost have you realized have you thought of it that the ganga aarti in haridwar or kashi bararas or lakshmanjula they take the ganga pani and do the aarti with that ganga pani same ganga pani they take it in the kamandu and do the aarti with that huge common rules isn't it so when you and i do something we say what i have done it but the enlightened master say it is the mother who has done it through me i am just just a carrier of the work load in the enlightened master realizes what i am the water but it doesn't mean that he stops functioning as a man or a woman he continues to work play the role of the father the son the daughter but he knows inside of his inside just as we started today all the time knowing that it is the mother the brahman is operating through me this body which is not me through this body through this mind is acting and i am that tattvamasi aham brahmasmi i am that brahman and then what happens then he sees all the waves as one no conflict so now husband wife lovers why do they fight why is there quarrel why is there disagreement why is there conflict because because <laughs> separation duality and our intention is to become one how do we do that very simple stop spreading what you want try and saying what can i do for you what can i do to make you feel better maybe a staff how can i make you feel 
that the purpose of your life through this organization is fulfilled. The moment you start to make the other person as same as you, you look at the problems on a corporate or in a family and think of it like that, being in a different body mind, but you instantly realize, okay, this is what she wants. This is what he needs. So the enlightened master realized that we are not separate. We are one. We appear to be separate. So the water appears as wave in the ocean and the river and the puddle on the roadside. So Sri Ramakrishna was asked by Swami Akhandananda, a very, very favorite disciple of his, was asked, what is the difference between bhakti and jnana? Paramahamsa Ramakrishna answered it very beautifully and very simply. He says, bhakti apparently is between, he didn't answer all this, I'm explaining it. <laughs> he said, bhakti apparently is towards an idol, towards the Kali Mata, Durga Mata, or one of the form like Shiva or Krishna, or to an idol called Ishta Devata. He said, whoever is your Ishta Devata, which is my bhakti, is your Brahman. Now look, Brahman is infinite, Brahman is one. And that consciousness, thinking of it with a little clarity, that consciousness itself has become me or you, or the things around, or the people around, or my partner, the family members around. One consciousness alone is in different, different body. Minds are all different. Everybody's mind is different. Everybody's knowledge, ego, memory is different. That is, if you recollect from the last conversation, is the sukshma sharira. And when we die, what happened? The body does not go away. Body stays. It doesn't vanish. But the sukshma sharira, which is mano buddhi chitta ahankar, Shankaracharya's words, it separates like a bubble. And with the divine grace, I have seen this few times, not just once. Very clear, crystal clear. And the divine mother blessing, I could see. It was brilliantly yellow, green, white, jyoti, and just at the top of the Brahmarandra. And from there, it was like an oblong balloon attached. This young girl had just died. Not very young, 28, 29 years of age. Had just died. Left her body. And that was still attached, the Sukshma Sharida. That sukshma sharira carries all our karma and good, good, bad, bad, all faces the law. Vivekananda's word. He goes on to explain, not one blow that we receive is undeserved. Whatever happens to us, good things is because we have done something good bad things, it is because we have done something bad. And the great masters sometimes take away those power of the guru, those problems of the other people into themselves. And you see them suffering. And you say, how can he suffer? The so Paramahamsa Ramakrishna once, he was lying down and he had a big boil at the back, at a very awkward position on top in the center of the spine. And Vivekananda was trying to clean it for every day and he could see it is oozing with pus and all that. He couldn't tolerate it. He loved his guru so much. He put his mouth to try to suck away the pus and the blood. Little old time, there must have been things not available. And Paramahansa Ramakrishna said, Billy, come here. And he put him in the front and he said, what are you doing? He said, I'm trying to take away that pus and the blood. I can't tolerate you suffering so much. 
the Ramakrishna Paramahansa said, do you think I cannot heal myself? <laughs> he knew and he is tolerating that. And yet, when Hari Maharaj asked him, Thakur, how are you feeling this morning? And he said, very bad throat, can't eat anything. And Turiya Maharaj said, but you're looking very good, as if you're in bliss. And Paramahansa Ramakrishna, cancer patient, he left his body another three days' time. He goes ahead and says, Rascal has caught me. This is what happens when you're enlightened. Duality becomes one. And this bhakti, apparently, it is nothing else but kalpitam advaitam. It appears to be imaginarily separate, but actually it is one. And in the day-to-day -day life, you find that this is what happens, that imaginary separation leads to confusion, delusion, suffering, fights, quarrels. I said so, and I said so. And it dissolves when you become enlightened, when you become truly an Advaita body. You are different then. This bhakti attintam kalpitam advaitam is the dualistic bhakti. Swami Ranganathananda, he became the 13th president of the Ramakrishna mission. Now, as a custom, as a principle, the president Maharaj, every day morning, supposed to go and sit in the temple of Ramakrishna, Holy Mother, Vivekananda, sit there for a while, meditate, and every day. But the young devotees found that he's not doing it every day. He goes and Ranganathananda was 13th president selected by that time Jawaharlal Nehru and Indira Gandhi to travel world around. He traveled to 60 plus countries just carrying the message of Vedanta and chosen by Indira Gandhi and Nehru to go around and spread the word of Vedanta. And he used to travel around in one day itself. He would be fantastic. Uh, he, there is a beautiful book called Monk Without the Frontier. He had no limitation. And this great Advaita Vedantis, he wasn't going every day to Ramakrishna Paramahansa temple. So some of the other little older brahmachari who were not monk and not novices ask Ranganathananda's helping aid young brahmachari. Why is it he doesn't go every day? Is it that he doesn't like to go? Is it that he is not well? He is not feeling well? By the way, I have been blessed to meet him. I met him when he was about 98 years of age. It was in Belur Mat. He had gone down and that pranam to him. I still remember him. So the young sadhaka, he said, no, the problem is that when he goes to the temple, it's so difficult to take him out. And there is so much of work. He just continues to sit there. And we say, sir, so-and-so is waiting. He said, five minutes more. Ranganatha will say, five minutes more. And it's so difficult. Every time it's five minutes more, five minutes more. And that's how we reduce his going down to the temple. They're so addicted to this love with God, love with great guru and the master. This is what I mean by saying, can you and I, like a toothache, you know when we have a toothache, that toothache is always there and we know throughout the day I've got a toothache. Just like that. Bad example, just like that, an awareness. Whatever we do, wearing clothes, thinking about Brahman, God, Mother. Eating food, offering to Brahman. The Brahman alone is existing. In the ancient time, in the Yagna, Nachiketa Yagna, if you know, that is, is a famous Yagna. And Nachiketa asked to learn how to do that. Yamraj taught him Katha Upanishad. And then he said, because of your ardence and your young age, 
I like your sincerity. This yagna from now will be Nachiketa yagna known as. In which you are saying, this is Brahman. Brahman with the spoon is picking up the Brahman and offering it to the Brahman, which is the fire. And the Brahman is receiving it. It is the Brahman alone is everywhere. Now, Krishna was asked by Archana. And Krishna answers, I have four types of devotee. Many of you know. The first are those, those who are utter need, suffering, pain, sickness, money, no food, clothes, no shelter, flood, victims, or a volcano eruption, thinking about God all the time to remove the suffering. This is first kind. The second kind is the one who needs name, fame, power, money, success. My book should be, book which I've written should be the bestseller. I should be given a Nobel Prize for the concept that I'm talking about. Like that. <laughs> you know, this, this clock that you're hearing, it's clocking as 12 o'clock, but it is not 12 o'clock. It is 15 minutes before 12. You know, why is it said 12 minutes before? Because when I go into meditation, I sometimes just don't get up, can't get up. <laughs> and, and this sound, when it comes in, and if it penetrates my consciousness, awareness, I realize now you better start moving because you've got only 15 minutes more. Otherwise, you'll be late for the work. So don't be surprised when you hear this. So now we were talking about, he said, first, is those who are in need in hunger and emergency, sick. The second ones who need something like money and fame and prosperity and success and professional life. Book should be the best book and things like that. The third one are who are sincerely searching for God and are not letting anything else come in between. And the fourth one are the enlightened one who already realized. And Krishna goes ahead and says, all are my devotee, all I am very fond of. But the dearest of all of them is the jnani who is always in me and I am in him, her, all the time. She, he is always in me. Now, understand this. But some people said, why? This was another question came to me. So you understood the dualism and non-dualism. Basically, the non-dual, though they're Advaita, but they realize that if I am the enlightened one. I am playing the role of the wave, but I can see that everybody is the water. I'm also water. So he is walking, playing, doing work. Paramahamsa Ramakrishna was not forgetting. Yogananda was not forgetting his disciples. Jesus Christ did not forget his 12 disciples. So without forgetting, they're interacting with each other, but they know all are one, one consciousness. So knowing that, that Advaita is actually spread to the Dvaita, Bhakti is coupled with Advaita essence. And that is how we practice in Kriya Yoga along with Advaita. And Shankaracharya writing down beautifully at one place that Advaita Vadi, when they utilize Bhakti and Advaita, the Bhava is called the Madhur Bhava. It's the most sweetest feeling. You know you are one with everyone, and yet you play the role with everybody together. It's a beautiful role. And this is where our Advaita 
and the word was used by our great masters and said what we divinize our human relationship so what do i see a duality husband wife but i call pitri devo bhavo acharya devo bhavo swami devo bhavo patni matri bhavo so you look at your partner as god men women husband wife parent friends children you see them as divinity and so what do you do you divinize your human relationship and you humanize the divine relationship that is you make god as like a human so what is it first bhava krishna is explaining is shant bhava you are peaceful you are calm and you are absolutely in tranquil this second bhava is called dasya bhava separate we are humanizing the divine relationship thus i am your servant like hanuman ji says deho buddhya dasoham no <laughs> dasya bhav sakha bhav arjuna krishna hanuman ji is going in and saying atma buddhya tadam sakha i am your friend and he goes on to say that the supreme buddhya you and i are one we are not different and then comes vatsalya bhav you are now you know that fear of god and many religion tries to spread that fear of god is not good until or unless you utilize that awesome god supreme powerful god you utilize it start by creating little fear you must do it in the morning otherwise you will be some religion practice it advaita does not do that but it may be some gurus may choose to do it but eventually that ultimate goal is to from fear to feeling of that awesome and from there adoration and then bhakti love for god so vatsalya bhav what are you doing you are nourishing the child god as your child the baby baby krishna baby jesus baby rama the mother is taking care the father is taking care god as the child and then is from vatsalya bhav it comes in the vatsalya bhav then drops away and madhur bhav comes in which is to be many of our great masters our great gurus this is the bhav paramahamsa yogananda in the desert he went in for a long meditation when he came out devotees are explaining as if a light was walking in and he was oozing with so much of peace smile and joy that we wanted to go and hug him and yet we didn't go and hug him because there was also an aura of separation and we realized we are humanized so this is that humanizing the divine relationship and divinizing the human relationship so basic the whole thing started is understanding that we say we fall in love no i fell in love by the way when swami vivekananda <laughs> was asked and actually he mentioned he was staying with another the hostess was taking care of him as the 
1893-11 September talk was going on. And one day, Vivekananda says, Madam, I am in love. And the lady smiled, American lady, and said, who is the lucky lady? The Swami Vivekananda smiled and said, no, it is not a woman. It is the organization of this Vedanta. I am in love with Vedanta. Similarly, is that humanizing that relationship. So with this, the awe, awesome, you know, you hear this word westernized, awesome, God is awesome. From awesome starts off with fear, but the fear change it to ultimate goal is to love. The so dualism going into non-dualism and the fear to awe and awe, wonder from there, adoration. I love your ways to bhakti and to oneness. We have some more beautiful questions, which we have already finished in five minutes to go for one hour. I would not take it up. I will give a little uh, outline of the second question was the psychedelic feelings, just like you go into Samadhi and many of you get, you know, that mesmerizing experiences you have, mystic experiences. Everybody will have in this journey with the Kriya and the Advaita, you have to have it. You will have many types. So that mysticism is people feel very great and they try to hold on to it. But the great masters say, don't hold on to it. And the question came in that the psychedelic, like you take those drugs and things like that. What is the difference between that experience and this experience? You see, the main difference, we should talk about it more in future. We have about five minutes. The main thing is, it is the experience. In other words, it is the content. Content is not important. What experience did you have? I felt like this and I was soaring. I saw divine light. I was hearing. Pranabhatthani, like that. That is not important. But important is the awareness of the mind attaining that experience and elevating. So, Going back to our earlier experiences has a beginning, has an end. But through the yogic experiences, through the bhakti yoga experiences, when you go on to ayama, niyama, asana, pranayama, pratyahara, dharana, dhyana, samadhi. Dhyana and samadhi, pratyahara, dharana, dhyana, samadhi. You're going into oneness. There in the samadhi state, remember, samadhi also has a beginning, has an end. But what that is the experience, has a beginning, has an end. Experience also gives you certain awareness and knowledge. I didn't know German. Now I have learned German. I know German. But what samadhi does is it gives you knowledge. And that knowledge cannot be taken away. In your day-to-day -day life, <laughs> we have forgotten Charles' law, and Boyle's law, and Faraday's law, and Ohm's law, isn't it? We had mugged it up. We have forgotten what is written in our Shok Stamba of our country. Most people don't remember. I talked to the parent and teacher. Sat Tameva Jayate, what is written from Mandakya Upanishad. People have forgotten. Why? Because we mugged it up. Wrong methodology of understanding. But the moment you realize it, like, notice, if you have established truth, you cannot forget it. Another crude example. If you learned swimming, you can't forget swimming. If you learned cycling, you may have fallen down many times. But if you've learned it, to cycle, to walk, to run, you cannot. Until unless you become very old and then your sense of balance is gone or something, that's another issue. That's aging factor. Another taste of Alfonso mango or let's say vanilla ice cream. <laughs> Feeling hungry? 
vanilla ice cream. You can never forget it. Alfred the mango, somebody offered you in Australia or Singapore, or somebody offers you in America in a dinner party and says, this is a surprise for you and gives you, and as you taste it and say, ah. For that lady, maybe totally different. First time Alfred the mango. You know it because why? You've tasted it. We play this game with the children. You know what we do? We make them taste six, seven, ten different fruits. As we give them, we let them see the color, we let them see the fruit, we let them taste it. Then we tie up their eyes. And they may not recollect, they may mix up. But if I ask them, let's say I've given them a blueberry, I ask them, raise your hand when you taste mango again, make it easier. And slowly we will increase their level of knowledge. Is it mango? They will shake their head. Is it? And we give them, let's say, oranges and apples and, you know, like that, and the berries and the blackberries and the strawberries and the gooseberries. And he keeps saying no. And when we give them the mango, it is that. He knows. This is how, once you know, once you realize, once you become it, humanize the divine relationship. Then you're not falling in love, you're rising in love. The rise in love, how? You are important. What is it I can do for you? Stop holding on to oneness, uh, separatedness, holding on to separatedness, hold on to oneness. We are one in which I, my ego don't exist. You are important. What is it I can do to make you feel better? If you take on this journey, you will find so much of difference in your corporate, in your business world, in your family life, in your friendship, everywhere. And this is what the great Mother Teresa, Paramahansa, Yogananda, Ramakrishna have built such a huge empire of devotees all over the world. And they become deathless. And this is what we pray, no? Asato ma satgamaya, take us from unreal to real. Tamaso ma jyotir gamaya, from darkness of ignorance, to take us to the wisdom of light and knowledge. And mrityur ma amritam gamaya, from death, take us to immortality. Look at it. Jesus Christ's body is dead. Muhammad body dead. Guru Nana, Guru Gobind saying, Ramana Maharshi, Rishi Vyasa, their bodies are dead. Mahabhi Jain is not there. Buddha is not there. But they are there. So similarly understand that consciousness, once the body dies, Sukshma Sharida goes away, body stays, body is either buried or burnt. But that consciousness remains. That Sukshma Sharida, fine body, travels, which doesn't have consciousness. Consciousness is separate, always separate, always there. Sukshma Sharira will again take a rebirth into another body and will come as a mind and ego and memory and Mano Buddhi Chitta Ahankar. And consciousness will support. Any question? We are just on time. Any doubts, any question? <laughs> so nice. Meditative time. Diwali, lighting up all the seven chakras of the body is the row of light, the Pavali. We symbolically celebrate all this is to awaken and take it to The Ananda Chakra, Sushumna, Sahasradhara, and through the Sushumna Nadi, Ida and the Pingala, left and right, realizing. You will see as you practice again, you will have beautiful mystic experiences. You can talk about it, but don't let it dissuade you. You will get certain powers too. 
Don't let it distract you. It will try to distract you. Try to make you use it. Don't use it. Discard them. Use it maybe sometime for the welfare of the people. I wish you all very happy Diwali. Soon we shall be starting our Sunday sessions. Get ready. We'll let you know as soon as we are we're just checking it on with the other spiritual centers. In case you all know something, do give me a call or shout the ma'am at the team. We shall all coordinate and start off. I pray to the Supreme Divinity to awaken the consciousness in each and every one. May we have the consciousness, Chaitana, Chaitanya Bhava, Akasha Shanti, Prithvi Shanti, Vayu Shanti, Agnaya Shanti, Jalaspataya Shanti, Gau Shanti, Om Uttaradesha Shanti, Dakshinaya Shanti, Om Bhashchimaya Shanti, Purvati Shanti, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti.